This is the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and hitting subscribe on your friend's phone without them knowing. Coming to you from the kitchen studios in downtown Raleigh. This episode is sponsored in part by Spot On, tech that helps your business grow. Request a demo at spoton.com. And Joe Van Gogh Coffee, serving the community from seed to cup taking particular care at every step to honor the bean. And now, talking about solutions but not providing a single one, it's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And today we are proud to welcome longtime listeners, first-time guests from the Remedy Cocktail Company out in my neck of the woods, Holly Springs, North Carolina, Ariana and Rob Nestor. Welcome, folks. Thank you for having us. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah. So, does that like, are you a Mike Francesa fan or Sports Talk Radio, or you just appreciate that we are? Or? Honestly, I, I love a good zing intro. I yeah. mean, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. That was, so what I'm referencing here is that was Rob's uh, introduction into Remedy Cocktail Club. That's how he introed his email to us to be like, you guys should have us on the show. First time caller, long time listener. <laughs> uh, hey, Mike, for, for long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> yeah, who's the, wh- what's the show that always, like, the guys always announce their height and weight? Oh, that's the Dan Patrick show. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, Max, 5'10", 200 plus. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this is, uh, we... Uh, Y- y'all just took over the studio, which is amazing, and I love this. Um, Ariana is crafting cocktails in with our little portable bar as we speak inside the podcast studio. You've just whipped up. I mean, you heard all the shaking before. That was live in the moment as as the show was getting started. Uh, this is a good way to start the day. We recorded yeah. Tuesday at 11, and it's uh, 11.15 right now, and there are uh, a plentiful amount of cocktails being whipped up in studio, but... Let's start here. Oh, and you're handing me one as we speak. Okay, well then, um, I guess let's start with what this is. Ariana, do you care to tell us what we're drinking? Sure thing. So the first uh, flavor we're introducing you to is our julep bitters. So this is our watermelon mint julep. Mm. This is made with um, Southern mm-hmm. Star, Paragon, Bottle and Bond bourbon, and our julep bitters, and a little splash of lime. From there, uh, we just garnish it with mint. And basically, we don't even bother muddling. We just let the ice do all the work. Just shake as much as you can. Let it break apart. Super easy cocktail. Very great for summer. We had leftover watermelon from uh, Memorial Day. And this is how we decided to use it. Hold on. So how does I... You went very fast there, yeah, even for no me, because I was trying to appreciate the cocktail at the same time. <laughs> um, but the watermelon is strikingly delicious in this. So... What? How did you? What did you do with the watermelon? Oh, so how did you get it in here? So I, I just it's cut just, up our watermelon up into chunks yeah. and let it through in the shaker in chunk form. Throw some ice in on top, and by shaking, that ice is just going to pulverize that watermelon. You're going to get fresh, straight watermelon flavor. But but this is watermelon left over from Memorial Day, so mm-hmm. that's twelve days or no, what nine days ago? Yeah. So we had a whole half. So fresh. In, had a half in the fridge. Um, the best way to keep watermelon is to cover it with saran wrap and don't cut it up. If you cut it up, by now that would be fermenting in my fridge. Right. 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 So we kept the the half nice and clean and kept it in the fridge and cut it up last night to prepare for today. And but let it be known, this is not a watermelon farmer talking to us. <laughs> No. They bought these watermelons, I assume. Yes. Um, We're talking about bitters, and we're talking about how to make the greatest cocktails using these local sourced bitters. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, so we're looking at Remedy Cocktail Co., uh, small batch bitters, and you have this beautiful array of flavors. You guys are local, as Matt said, in Holly Springs, and you're a married couple, and you just put this together. I, I, I got to know, like, how did we get started? How did you want to do this? Absolutely. So, um, well, I have a long history of being in the hospi- hospitality and service industry in general. I grew up on a resort in uh, upstate New York. Um, I was probably wiping the windows on the bar by the time I could reach them. Which resort was this? Uh, oh, it's Soyuzivka. It's a Ukrainian-American resort. Up in the Shawangunk Mountains. So, so you Ziska, 
up in the Schwangok Mountains. Yes. Everyone get that? It's a mouthful. <laughs> sure. It's a mouthful. Um, so <laughs> it's, near, it's near like Mohonk Mountain House and okay. Minnewaska and all that in that area. Hidden little gem up in the mountains. Um, back in the, I want to say it was in the 50s, there was a fraternal insurance um, organization in New York City that wanted to find a place for the Ukrainian diaspora in New York to be able to vacation with their families and keep their culture alive. So they ended up buying 408 acres up on the mountain in uh, the Shawangok Mountains there and turned it into a year-round resort. So I wish you knew more about this. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, fascinating. Like, you know, we don't try to swing in the political lane too much, but obviously with, in support of Ukraine, like, couldn't be more timely. Um, and I heard you mention before, so you're Ukrainian. Do you still have family there? Um, distant family. It's okay. more like, you know, second cousin twice removed, you okay. know, that kind of that kind of situation. Um, but I grew up in the diaspora that came over in uh, the 30s, 40s, 50s. That cohort of immigrants are kind of the, the people that I grew up with. You okay. grew up in the 30s? No. My grandfather came over in 1932. So I'm second generation American. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you were but, young yeah, spry. I grew up with yes. the grandchildren of the people who Got emigrated it. here um, during World War II, generally. <laughs> so so. you have a, a background in the hospitality industry. Yep. You Were you a bartender for a, a time? Um, I worked uh, around bars, but never actually bartended. Interesting. Um, I gain a lot of things just kind of by osmosis around the um, industry. Osmosis means YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> no, more like my uncle was the bartender, and I would sit there and talk to him about how he was making my drinks and oh, nice. things like that. Once I was 21, of course. Of course. But, um, okay. but yeah, hang out around the bar a lot, probably way before I should have. Um, and beyond that, uh, my grandparents who live in Florida own hotels down there so they actually owned one in sarasota that was connected to a uh, old school tiki bar right so that was oh, the bahi cool. hut in sarasota they owned it for i'm going to say at least 30 years if not longer nobody's um, going to fact check you on that it's okay. yeah i don't know the exact years uh <laughs> before i was born and then in the um, 30s. Yeah, and then they right. sold it uh oh probably in the early aughts i would say okay but yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, how does get, Rod Rob fit into this whole thing? Oh, he's my CTO. Uh, he does all my technology, and he's my chief talking officer. So, CTO works <laughs> chief for him officer, yeah. in multiple ways. Could also be chief tech officer if you're. Are you good at that? Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. what she was saying. Like, yeah. I actually handle all of our social media and website stuff like that. All the tech stuff that you know most business owners have to hire someone to do. She got lucky, and she has that in house. So. Nice. Yeah, and so um, that's my background. But from there. When we lived in Boston for a stint, my sister and I started a baking blog. And so during that time period, uh, we both discovered that we have really great palettes for breaking down and building flavors. Um, and we did that, parlayed that into making desserts, right? So baking and cooking primarily. Okay. So and this then, is uh, where one of those things, it's, it's really nice living with her because I have never wanted for food or beverage. <laughs> um, you know, when she says they're good at creating flavors, it, you know, we have two kids, and if they've ever said, I don't like this, it's like, no, no, you can't say that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've known her for, you know, over half of my life almost, and I've never had a bad thing. So you can't say you don't like this or it doesn't taste good. <laughs> you, know, you might not so. be in the mood for it. You know how kids do that. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm no, not in the mood I know for how it, kids so I that. hate this. My food teacher in eighth it. grade said, you haven't developed a, a taste for this yet. Hmm, yeah. That's a much better That's way That's the way I feel about it. Negronis mm -hmm. and most people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. But I want to understand something. So the, the main, uh, let's just say, revenue generator for your business yep. is the is the uh, bitters. Yep. Yeah. So that's, but also you are as, you serve as consultants or can do kind of functions, weddings, bar mitzvahs, maybe, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever so, it is. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the bitters and gender the... Gender reveal parties. <laughs> gender reveal parties. There you go. As long as we don't, you know, cause fires or anything yeah, else. Or, or announce to the baby what their gender is. There you go. How dare you. Um, so, one of the things... <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, this is our part. Yeah, <laughs> no, we're not getting political. Let's stay away from that, Max. Yeah, so, sort of back into the bitters lane. Um, yeah, so you know, in addition to the bitters, um, you know, with Ariana's palate, she is really great at coming up with 
you know, signature cocktails, things of that nature, uh, doing uh, menu consultations. You know, certain places do great at, you know, they have folks behind the pine that can come up with great cocktails. You know, some restaurants and bars are, are kind of doing your, hey, we've got a margarita. We've had this margarita for seven years. Right. It's not a craft. You know? yeah. yeah. And so, you know, craft cocktails you know are huge and you know depending on what the demographic of your customer looks like you know she can come in and kind of talk you know about what you know how you want to elevate what you're doing to either bring in more folks of a certain demographic or to kind of be able to upsell your current demographic things like that yeah and so who's currently distribute or do they just do, are bars and restaurants buying this directly from you or how are these currently distributed yeah so currently we you know we d- direct distribute um i really like being able to go in see who our clients are what their needs are what they're looking for um you know, one of the things we really prize are relationships. I'm not a salesperson. Okay. Um, Could have fooled me. No. Yeah, that's what all good salesmen say. <laughs> You're not being sold right now. I'm just a simple caveman. <laughs> Og like bourbon. Uh, no, I mean, seriously, it's it's it, it's one of those things where I'll go in, I'll tell you everything that she's making, and, and I can give you kind of a lowdown on, on what, what it pairs with, what the flavors are like. Ultimately, if you buy it, awesome, great. If you don't, awesome, great. Um, it's not going to kill me one way or the other. Um, but what I'm really concerned with is, you know, what kind of relationship can we build with you? Um, you know, are there opportunities for us to give you things that you can't get, you know, otherwise? Like one of the things we also do um, is custom bitters formulations. Okay. So if a hmm. bar or restaurant has a signature cocktail where they're like, yeah, we're going to be running this probably the whole year. Uh, we have, we, we definitely know what we want this to taste like, or we're pretty sure we know what we want this to taste like. Yeah. You know, they can work with her, Ooh. give those tasting notes and say, you know, hey, I want something that gives me this in a bitter. And we have a couple of clients that are doing this now. It usually takes about two swings. You know, if mm-hmm. they come, they say, hey, we want X, Y, and Z. She does a small test batch. Tasting notes return. Do another round, and that usually nails it. Okay. Well, hold what? on. So wait, there's got to be the NCF and bitter. Mm-hmm. We've already. We, yeah. This is discussed. <laughs> this is when it happens on the podcast. It happens in real life. Yeah. Matt. And so already, it is. I have it locked and loaded in my head. I will not change my answer. I know the herb that I want as my flavor. Okay. What's your favorite herb or uh, fruit or just give me your favorite flavor? Well, here's the thing. I, no. No, Just give it's me not your favorite, favorite flavor. flavor. <laughs> it's the end result for me of like what I wanted to have an easy. I know, but what if your favorite thing and my favorite thing, without knowing, just becomes the thing? Okay. So just give me yours. I have mine locked and loaded. I will not change. I mean, uh, I would say chive is my favorite. Really? Chive is yours. Yeah. Mine, dill. I was gonna say dill. I swear it was Those my first. Those could work really well like together. Chive. A chive and dill bitter, yeah. would be dope for like a martini. martini, a bloody mary. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could even do like a last word with that, like make it kind of herbaceous and. So that's Throw what that I was gonna margarita. say. That's that's what I wanted. My like you know my co- yeah. go to cocktails, the mezcal last word, yeah. and so that's that's kind of what. Yeah, if I could make that cocktail easily at home, but I think we're on to something. Well, I was going to say, you also said uh, Mezcal, which I, I, if she didn't have headphones on, her ears would have definitely stood up because uh, we joke that my wife's superpowers are tequila and Mezcal. Nice. Yeah. I'm happy already. Um, okay, so so uh, you mentioned some of the bars. Anybody you want to mention that, like, hey, if you want to go try a cocktail that we've kind of think tanked or helped out, do you want to plug yourself there? Uh, so, actually... Um, Right in our backyard, uh, the Blind Pelican, which has gone viral a bunch because of yeah. their Bloody Marys. I mean, if you, if you haven't seen these things, they're, they are the stuff of legend. Oh, uh, are they the ones that just have like a crazy accoutrement all over? Like the it's garnish insane. is nuts? Yeah, it's insane. Um, and they do a really great job. Josh out there is an awesome guy uh, behind, the, uh, behind the pine. And he, um, he's actually how we ended up doing a custom bitter for them. Uh, for their smoke bubble rye cocktail, smoked uh, bubble rye. Yeah, so they actually have one of the smoke guns blow the you know the 
the, the smoke bubble on top. Yeah, it's a Manhattan, but they have oh, the, yeah, the yeah. smoke gun, and um, the bitters in that drink are their custom formulation that they worked with us on. And they're old fashions. They're also using us. Um, an- another place I got to give a shout out to, uh, it's fairly new, is Tap Station over in Apex. Oh, yeah. Um, they're using our noir bitter and their old fashions. And I will tell you that if you're a bourbon drinker, like, it's, I feel like people just, if they're a bourbon drinker and I let them try our noir bitter, they're just like, where can I get more of this? What's, what's in the noir bitter? That's a um, tamarind, black cardamom, and black walnut combination. Mm. Okay. So you have a real ripe fruit together. flavor paired with a kind of smoky, nutty. nutty finish. It works in such a large variety of cocktails. I basically, we have an aromatic bitter. Okay. But that, I say, is really our signature aromatic because people, once they hear what's in it, they can taste it all. But it's really an aromatic. It's hard to p- pull out what you're tasting. Um, and I feel as though it often pairs well with all brown spirits, but then beyond that, you also can put it in citrus drinks. So mm, it's great in like right. a mango like a, or pineapple. It, that just position the tamarind, nutty. and then it gives you that, that um, kind of contrast with the smoky, nutty finish. Yeah. Well, I want to know I want to know the nerdy stuff. I want yeah. to get technical. I want to learn like your process. I want to learn all your secrets so that everyone can steal them <laughs> and YouTube them later and then create their own thing. No, but I do want to know the process of making bitters it, it, just in shorthand form so we can understand what we're doing. But but everyone has to wait. You don't get all that knowledge for free. You have to wait for the lights to be put on, you know? And, and with that, we need to talk about our fantastic sponsors that help us out. That's such right. Such as? Spot on. And... These cocktails so far have been spot on, and I'm sure you guys as a new business probably struggle, I'm assuming, with uh, figuring out what you have in inventory, how you communicate with your front of the house systems, how you do your payroll, even though maybe now you only have a couple of employees, how uh, you're going to outfit your distribution and all that. Well, guess what? Our friends at Spot Hunt can do this for you. They can make it very easily uh, into a tech package, even though you're the chief technology Officer Rob, you can work with them, and um, they can really create everything for you and make it easy, affordable, and you can work directly with their local rep. Her name is Tanya Manibo. She's a good friend of the show. Her number is 858-213-7820. You can call her directly. That's 858-213-7820. Or you can email her, Tanya M. That's T-A-N-Y-A-M at spoton.com, and uh, I just saw her recently at Bubbles and Brisket, and next year they're going to create a kiosk for for us. Uh, whether to, they know it or not. Whether they know it or not, they will, yeah. uh, because that's what they do at Spot On. They, they make your life easier for business and tech, um, and uh, they're, they're going to create our whole check-in process and streamline it next year. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is cool because we're going to kind of blend these two ideas together. Um, I'm looking at what you're about to make, and it looks like you're using some sort of cold brew concentrate. Well, we are drinking some delicious brewed Chemex coffee, courtesy of Joe Van Gogh Coffee, which you can find all around the Triangle, from Hillsboro down to Raleigh, through Chapel Hill and Durham. And uh, Joe Van Gogh, they've been now proud sponsors of the podcast for over a year Going into our second year with yeah. Joe Van Gogh, and uh, you can you can get their coffee uh, wherever they are selling coffee in their coffee shops, like uh, Sir Walter Ra- or, yeah Sir Walter Coffee. Sorry, I said that wrong. Sir Walter Coffee just around the corner from here. But then they also have their coffee shops, Joe Van Gogh Coffee Shops, all around. You can get them in retail stores as well, or you can just find out more information by going to JoeVanGogh.com and uh, let them know that the gents over at the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast sent to you. But we are drinking the uh, Nadia Duke coffee from uh, the Honduras uh, coffee that we've had before. It is fantastic. A little sip. Hold so, on. So fantastic. I would definitely oh. like to taste this in a cold brew martini. Orange marmalade, a little nougat. Mm. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> but go to Joe Van Gogh, learn more, check our notes, our show notes, and click the link. But now I'm curious because yeah. the two of you are, are <laughs> let, let's let we'll talk technical. But I know that you were getting into your next cocktail that you were doing right here. So maybe through the process of uh, pouring and serving this drink, we can talk a little tech about how you make your bitters. Sure. Um, so with any flavor, I often have a flavor in mind of what I'd like to pair with a cocktail that I've had in the past or a flavor I'd love to have as a tool behind my bar. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so as a result, I'll grab those fresh ingredients. We only use whole fresh ingredients, no chemical flavorings or colorings or anything like that. And I'll sit there with my like mortar and pestle and I'll grab out all of the different bittering agents that I have and different herbs and spices. And I start to just kind of build, right? And often I base this on smell, um, a little bit of gut instinct of knowing what works well <laughs> together. And, uh, and I'll do a small batch to test it out. And then scaling sometimes is, you know, a little bit of tweaking here and there once you scale, but it gives me a good basis of proportions to build from there. But we basically use a uh, neutral grain spirit base, mm -hmm. put all whole ingredients in it and let it macerate for some amount of time. Secrets in the sauce. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and from there, we filter out all the solid materials, bottle it up. I'd say something that makes us different than a lot of the national brands um, and other people is we don't do a second maceration, which a lot of people will take distilled water and that solid material and then let it macerate again in distilled water. And then they'll use that flavored water to dilute down the base bitter, mm. right? And so you end up with a different mouthfeel, uh, lower ABV. Uh, so we think a less potent flavor. I think generally talking to our customers in bars and restaurants locally, they don't have to use as much of ours in a cocktail to make it right. Sometimes we're talking drops yeah. uh, instead of dashes. We love bitters, so we're always doing dashes. <laughs> what is the current ABV content at, or average on most of these? Uh, average is about 90. Okay. So it's about 90 proof. Oh, wow. Um, so how do, so yeah. do you have to sell these only at the ABC store then? or No, because these are actually, so it's an interesting topic, because the fact that these are considered um, a non-potable alcohol beverage, uh, that's a lot of words, yeah. uh, but basically what that means is you're not going to take the top off and swig it. Yeah. Um, wow. yeah it, it, it's actually handled a lot like uh, vanilla extract. Ah. So if you pick up a bottle of vanilla extract, on average, that's about... Nah, it's about seventy to eighty proof. Really? Yeah. I never realized that. Well, oh, because oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also just rubbing alcohol. Yeah. I mean, is is alcohol? Yeah. But you can buy it at the CVS. Well, so it's denatured, uh, and by denaturing an alcohol, you actually make it unfit for consumption. Mm. So that's why you can't just you swig that back. It'll actually it it would make you sick. What about that purple drink? Now that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, Marcus Russell knows a lot about <laughs> that purple drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's our sports reference for the yeah. day, folks. But, um, but yeah. So you, you, yeah, it's because it's served in a dropper form. It's like, yeah, go ahead, kids, get wild, <laughs> one drop at a time. Right. You know? Yeah. So, and, and ultimately, you know, because we do have, uh, we do have customers that come to us because, you know, in addition to bars and restaurants, we do direct consumer sales online and in person uh, at, you know, like the Holly Springs Farmers Market, things like that. We do have folks who come up and they, and they're maybe not familiar with. Uh, bitters and maybe they don't enjoy a good cocktail, you know, they're out there. Yeah. Um, so, How dare them. Uh, right. Uh, but they're curious about the flavor component of it, and so they can actually uh, utilize our bitters in things like that awesome Joe Van Gogh coffee. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of customers who love things like our Mexican chocolate or our black walnut bitters in those. And so... I'm sorry, uh, Ariana just handed me your your next cocktail, and it just made me stop my tracks right now. Uh, you you got to tell me. I, I didn't mean to cut you no, off, you're but good, this you're is good. just holy crap. What are mm. we drinking right now? So you have a uh, chili cold brew martini. So it's a riff on an espresso martini. Uh, we keep a relatively basic proportion for our general usage, and you can tweak from there as to what you like. But generally, we do equal parts, vodka, um, uh cold brew concentrate so we also sometimes will some use the espresso concentrate version yeah. <laughs> if you really like something high test but we just have a regular cold brew concentrate today and today we're using the damn fine liqueur from durham distilling um which is a really good uh coffee liqueur locally it's not as sweet as kalua yeah so i did add a little bit of simple syrup if you use kalua you do not need to add any sugar but right but with that what's nice is you can tweak how sweet you like it before this our favorite uh coffee liqueur was out of australia so mr black if you guys have had it makes a no. really good cold brew liqueur and so it's like arabica bean it's the one liqueur i've had that actually tastes the way it smells okay right so it's a really strong coffee flavor not overly sweet um, it's really great. And then with this, we use our chocolate chili bitters, which add some depth as well as um, a little bit of spice, right? So you get a little bit of kind of that heat tingle on your palate, and it yeah. helps break up the flavor. Often you'll get an espresso martini, and it'll taste great in the beginning, and then it lays kind of flat 
on your palate. And so bitters can really help kind of enjoy the experience from the front of your palate to the back of your palate. So that's one of the things we like to do with our espresso martinis. Well, I was going to say, uh, this is not your run-of-the-mill espresso martini. It's got a little heat there, and but it's just got bursting with flavor, like you said. You know, back in the day when... Uh, well, when I was behind the bar, Max is still behind the bar sometimes. We just used to use that, like, Godiva chocolate liqueur yeah, behind yeah. it, and it would just be so sweet. Yeah. But people loved it if they wanted sweet drinks, you know. But well, uh, this is not that. Well, and the other thing, too, that, you know, a lot of people, if they're not familiar with bitters, um, one of the things we try and educate them on is, you know, bitters can actually help with that cocktail that you've come up with where you're like, oh, this is nice. And then about halfway through, you're like, why do my teeth feel fuzzy? It's because you've made a too sweet cocktail. Mm-hmm. You, we can save that by and large with bitters because it's going to dry up that finish to a large degree. Um, that watermelon cocktail that we started with, you know, y- you definitely got like a sweet flavor off of it, but it's one of those things where it's not going to end up with you being like, yeah. Uh, well, watermelon no. in itself has enough sugar content that you don't want to adulterate it anymore but if you can pack some more flavor into it exactly and that's where you guys come in exactly so that makes that makes a whole lot of sense so what's the story here you guys what were you doing before you decided let's start a bitter company so, were you really bitter <laughs> actually um i i teach at wake tech part-time as an adjunct uh, that was kind of my main role in the culinary sciences no there, or uh, what were you teaching? so i have a uh, master's in political science so uh-huh. i teach american government and international relations Ooh, maybe we should make this a political yeah. conversation so, <laughs> how do we solve uh, this uh, abortion bill everybody <laughs> oh, God. Just kidding. Um, right. but yeah no so i i was teaching part-time and i picked that up uh as our kids got a little older we actually moved down here to be able to buy a house and from boston yeah yep Yep. So we were in Boston for seven years, moved down here because we could not afford to buy a house up there without it being all original 1952 on a postage stamp. Right. And they throw in the asbestos all the and the lead paint for free. That's all nice. original yeah. furnace yeah. right in the middle of the kitchen, asbestos flooring, you know, and having a baby that was kind of not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. That's like my, my uh, 1800 square foot two bedroom apartment in, in Santa Monica or Playa del Rey that was like $2,400. And back then, like, that's. 10 no. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's how much we were paying for now. 600 square feet in Boston. Right. So, you know, it was not ideal and we wanted to be able to own a home. So we moved down and. But why North Carolina? Uh, so we actually met in Wilmington uh, at UNCW back in 2005. Ah. And so we both are UNCW alum. And from there, we, you know, graduated. I went to grad school in Boston. He ended up moving up there with me, spent seven years up there. Um, started building a family, and when we were looking for some place to go where we could actually afford to live, we decided to come back down to the Triangle area because um, he, in another life, is in IT. Um, and <laughs> when I worked there in Boston College, I actually worked in IT as well, not knowing what I'd want to do with my master's or my career once the kids were old enough to go to school. Uh, we thought this was a good place to be with all yeah. the tech. So at the very least, we wouldn't have to uproot the whole family to move for jobs. At and we were like. super fortunate. We had some some our best friends from college actually had settled in southeast raleigh and so you know we had a a bit of a community to kind of land into we weren't just like yeah middle because i'm originally from the western part of north carolina um but you know didn't really know anyone in raleigh outside of you know our best friends but you know we've been here for it's going on about eight and a half years and you know being in holly springs you know if anybody's familiar with it a huge amount of growth over the past uh, ooh, decade ooh. plus um but i will say that property values went down back in 2016 when the weiss family showed yeah, up for a short time <laughs> but they've rebounded they i assure down. you they have recovered yeah. <laughs> is that why we got a good deal in 2015 i think it might have been <laughs> um but you know we ended up um you know, being in Holly Springs, and I will say, kind of, uh, we, we were just having a conversation the other day. It's been amazing uh, to be there and starting a business because, and, and she's kind of humble about a lot of stuff. Uh, Ari actually just went through, graduated from the Launch Holly Springs program, which is an entrepreneurial kind of incubator that, you know, happens in a bunch of different towns and cities. Um, so there's that going on there. The kind of collection of small business owners in Holly Springs have been amazing just to have people to bounce stuff off of. Um, hey, you know, what about X, Y, or Z? Oh, talk to this person, or here's how you can do that. Yeah. Um, so it's been really nice. We, we, you know, we love the fact that we're out there. Um, it's so been enjoyable. What was that? Was that incubator program? Was that your genesis of Remedy Cocktail Company? Or so you were you were 
a professor, you were in IT. Mm-hmm. Now you're are you still doing an IT job or Well, you know, uh in, until we have a complete bitters empire, uh <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. I think Whole Foods is on the line actually uh wanting to carry your product nationwide, but um, and so, Ariana, when did you take? Are you do you you still teach at Wake Tech though? Uh, I'm taking a semester off this fall to okay. kind of reassess. Uh, the children were home with Virtual Academy over the past two and a half years. Um, so between <laughs> teaching, starting a business, and having the kids at home all the time, sounds uh, so chill. I was like, you know, this might be an overcorrection, but I'd like to put that on hold and really focus on the business, and then reassess from there. So I'm taking at least a semester off. Because it's a distraction. So you're doing this in your spare time? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so the Launch Holly Springs thing happened kind of coincidentally. We were already kind of brainchilding this into something at home. And then a friend locally who has a small business posted about it on Facebook and said, hey, we're accepting applications for this. We went through it. It's really awesome. And Mm. I said, well, you know, it's a free program if I get in. It'll help me build a business plan, which being having so much free time with all those other things, having homework, right, Right. to every week finish some part of your... your kids' homework. Exactly. Or the homework I have to grade. Uh, But, you know, having that homework to say, I need to get this part of it done this week. Keeps you accountable. Exactly. So that accountability really helped expedite launching the business. Yeah. If I hadn't had that with everything else, we'd probably still be in the, what's our mission right. statement uh, <laughs> a portion of this just because, you know, that's time amazing. Is so plentiful. You know, I, I, uh, obviously Max has his business now and this is our business, but forever, and I don't talk about this, but one of my reasons to move down here was to open up my own uh, wholesaler, wine wholesaler. And between having kids and having day jobs and having a podcast, it just didn't happen, but I imagine that this is a really good lesson or for a lot of people thinking there, because Max, you and I have discovered countless numbers of people who have great ideas, but just don't have like the the grease or the oil to get the business started because they have a mu- much other things. And hearing about a program like that, and I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of towns around Raleigh or throughout North Carolina probably have a simulator, simulator similar program. Yeah, so uh, there is a... Cold Brew Coffee yes. is working on yeah. it, isn't it, Matt? There is a Launch Raleigh, Launch Apex, Launch Holly Springs. I think there might be one out in Wake Forest. And generally, they're ran between a local community college, the Rotary Club, and your town. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in Holly Springs, you know, it's Wake Tech, the Rotary Club, and the town of Holly Springs all work together to get sponsors to cover the whole program. Wake Tech donates all of the curriculum. And so you technically become a Wake Tech student. So I was wearing two hats at Wake Tech oh, wow. for a little while there. Um, and they kind of give you a weekly class for 10 weeks. And then they the best part of it, honestly, is after that, you get six months of mentorship. So they pair you with a local entrepreneur or retired business owner, whoever you know they find that kind of fits for what you're doing and what your weaknesses are, you know, kind of help you evolve as an entrepreneur and so you get to meet with uh, your mentor every other week for six months um, I was fortunate enough to be paired with somebody really awesome that I told him he stuck with us. Yeah. <laughs> he's, That's great. Uh, you know, so uh, That's he just amazing. moved here from Detroit uh, a couple years ago. So um, he, he jokes that we're like, you know, he's like, well, if I stop meeting with you, that would be like half the people I know in the state. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're meeting still once a month at least and talking business. And it's great to have somebody who's not too close to it to kind of see what's going on and make recommendations and suggestions and all well, that. Let's uh, let's roll up our sleeves a little bit. Let's let's talk about your specific bitters that you're doing here because you have some great flavors, and uh, I'd love to know like the application for this stuff because like my mind is is roaming right now. I already think, uh, and, and you know, we can cut this if we don't want to do this, but I would love to even uh, propose you should come to Crafton. And just do like a cocktail di- cocktail night, like a little education or a little like uh, event. You can use me as like the labor to like actually make the drinks and all that. But you can Deal. be like, this is <laughs> this is the way this works. I, you will have to wipe and clean down the bar, of course. Book it, oh, yeah. <laughs> book it now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. And like and and like show people how to make cocktails. Show people how to make stuff. You know, a home cocktail or just spice up their own thing. But then specifically utilizing your flavors You're like i'm looking right now you've got your mexican chocolate bitters you have a black cherry bitters you have the lime and sea salt bitters which i just tried on my on my hand and i mean everything is so intense and pungent but yeah it's not cloying it's not weighty it's just 
it's refreshing and concentrated. So yeah, let us know a little bit more about sure. your product. Let's talk some doing. of the flavors. So we've got 15 different flavors right now. Uh, I've got three percolating in the back of my head that might um, come to fruition soon. I'd probably throw them in tonight, maybe. <laughs> see how they turn out. Um, but starting on the light side, as far as light flavors go, we have your typical orange bitters, which are a little brighter than your typical Angostura or your Regans. So it's a real bright citrus punch Ooh. that I think uh, most of the bartenders we have try them will compare, and they really enjoy the orange because of the brightness that it brings. From there, our lime and sea salt is super popular right now because we all know margaritas are the number one cocktail in America. Yep. Um, so they're a great addition to any margarita, obviously, any agave-based um, beverage. Your salt is going to add brightness to all the flavors and make it taste more like those ingredients. We could have easily thrown this into this um, you know, julep and really heighten that watermelon flavor. I'm guilty of putting salt on my watermelon. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else here does that. Salt there. But, watermelon, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so easily could have done both julep and this, um, or just the lime and sea salt if you wanted to use fresh mint instead of the julep. Speaking of the julep, that's what went in our julep cocktail earlier. That obviously is minty, but it also has a great herbal base. So you've got some birch and things like that in there as well that is not just straight mint. I've used it in frosting as well. Mm -hmm. um, so made a mint frosting with it and it oh, kept it from tasting idea. like toothpaste. Um, <laughs> because, you know, any kind of mint flavoring can yeah. easily go too far yeah. and taste like toothpaste. Uh, so the, the julep bitters are great in obviously julep cocktails, but mojitos, things like that. It's great for the home bartender especially because, I mean, I paid $3 for that tiny little thing of mint. I had enough to garnish four drinks. Right. Right. And that was pretty much it. There were like a few leaves left. No, I'm going to do some prep right now. I'll probably make like a gallon of mint simple syrup that we'll use for the week, but that's going to take a pound or so of, of mint. Like yeah. we're going to, we're going to use a lot of mint. Yeah. So for our mint juleps, we usually do three to four dashes just to heighten that, that mint up to where we like it. But obviously what's nice about this is you can adjust it and it's not going to make it overly sweet. You want it mintier, you're going to add more mint simple, which might make it too sweet. Right. Yeah. So um, what's nice is you can add more of this without making it overly sweet. But it's a great way to put mint in without having fresh mint, mm. right? And that's actually mm -hmm. part of the brainchild of all this was COVID, being home, not being able to go out to a cocktail bar and have a nice craft cocktail at home. We subbed our craft beer for craft cocktails. And we switched over to um, making syrups and shrubs and all sorts of things at home so that we could play with cocktails at home, which, you know, we had the base knowledge of how to do it. But honestly, a lot of it came down to you know, just having all the back bar. So, you know, a little extra income from uh, during COVID as far as not going out to eat as often. Uh, we were able right. to kind of build a back bar that at this point stands at probably 230, 250 bottles. So we can make almost any cocktail we feel like at home now. So we've kind of taken off from the mm -hmm. julep and, and lighter flavors. Uh, <laughs> the pink peppercorn <laughs> is one that also kind of speaks to a lot of agave spirits, but it also speaks to gin, vodka, you know, pretty much any of your white spirits. You know, you've got this nice tart, uh, sweet flavor on the front that's evocative of grapefruit, you know, blending into this nice, you know, subtle peppercorn on the back end. Uh, from there, we've got our lemon thyme. Really works well with gin. Uh, it, one of my favorite things is, you know, just a nice, like, gin and tonic with that. It gives, you know, this nice earthiness, savoriness. You get this blast of citrus. Um, but, like you said, once again, you know, you can use that in vodka cocktails. You can use that in a variety of other places as well. Um, black tea and citrus, uh, that's going to also scream uh, gin and tonics and other gin drinks. Our impetus for that actually was a absolute years ago did a city series, and the one for Boston when we lived there was black tea and elderflower and some other stuff. So it was kind of a hearkening back to Boston uh, Tea Party. Yeah, so... And we've actually used that in our um, <coughs> Boston Haba Martini. Um, that was a horrible Boston accent. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. But you're not the one from Boston. See, I'm, it's, it's, oh, yeah. I, I, I am a Southerner uh, you, you know, by birth, so I, it's as close as I get. So the next one would be our Down the Hatch bitters, <laughs> which we're going to go in the next cocktail I'm going to make y'all. Um, and so these are uh, hatch green chilies that we import from New Mexico. I roast them, peel them process them, freeze them, they end up in the bitters, you end up with a real great, fresh, 
green pepper flavor as well as some heat mm. and the smokiness that goes along with that as well. Great in agave-based spirits. It adds that vegetal element as well as heat. Yeah. So, so uh, just logistically, what does this cost and what's the ounces on a bottle? Yeah, so with that, um, we're selling four ounce bottles. Four uh, ounce. They are all, you know, uh, direct in, direct to consumer pricing is eighteen a bottle. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, our bar and restaurant clients, we handle that a little bit differently. Um, if you're a bar or restaurant listening to this who wants to talk to us about getting our flavors into your place, uh, you can reach out to us. Um, you know, remedycocktailcompany.com uh, at Remedy Cocktail Company on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. You know, get in touch with us. Your pricing's a little different, but we've clocked it at you know if we're doing two dashes uh, per cocktail, a four ounce bottle is going to run you about 120 cocktails. Mm-hmm. So, you know, w- w- when you it's a good value, yeah. So, so you know, I think it's in line with what you would expect for you know craft bitters. Um, you know, obviously, if you're used to just you know a bottle of Langostura for five bucks. It's it's a little different, but uh, sure. that's also a different level of product. Too. Yeah, yeah. And so. this is again supporting local, and it's a high craft, and it's the fresh ingredients, which reminds me a lot. You guys are like kind of uh, a lot of synergy with non salts, who non pinch, pinching salts, who mm-hmm. we just did, and their kind of uh, really differentiating factor was the fact that they're using all fresh ingredients. And it's hilarious because we were listening to that episode uh, yesterday. And the first thought that she came up with was, oh, we should totally get some of that so we can rim some of these cocktails. Yeah. Because one of the things we do is you know, we're putting yeah. out three to five cocktails a week uh, on our social media as you know, encouragement to home cocktail makers to say, look, you know, this isn't anything you know, insane. Here's something you can make that's delicious. You know, all those recipes end up on our website as well. So, you know, the things that we're serving you guys today, people can go check out on our website and make at home. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Like their, um, the, the Tenebroso, the Tenebroso that they have would be perfect. It's kind of got that high spice and heat kind of factor to it, which would be almost like using the tahine, but like in a different, you know, more, almost more like Mediterranean feel as opposed to like a Latin feel. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. And, uh, it seems like also, uh, as I kind of get in the whole picture and scope, that, yeah, you, your first kind of uh, guest or customer is that person who wants to make the home cocktail. But also, I see a lot of application for this for the cra- even the craft cocktail bar who, like we say, you know, oh, we're making really good cocktails, fresh ingredients, but then this just lifts it to the next level. No, every um, bartender loves great bitters. Yeah, bitters. Yeah. 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 Honestly, that's been, we've seen a really great reception from, you know, from craft cocktail establishments. Um, You know, obviously there are places you can go into and they're like, yep, we make everything in house. Totally respect that. Yeah. Anybody who's making bitters, good job. Um, But, you know, it's that matter of time, variety, you know, all of those play a factor. Um, I've yet to meet a bartender who goes, more things for me to paint with? No thanks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, in this realm, I, I know that just like creating the cocktail program at Crafton, we're not buying all the liquor, you know, like old school bars used to just buy everything. And they're like, we have uh, 17 different vodkas and 17 different gins and all that. And it's like, we're not doing that any longer, folks. Like, you can't just call everything now. We, we're, we're buying things that make sense for us and more than likely are uh, specific to the cocktail program and then a couple of big hitters. Like (laughs) we said before we got on the microphone, like you're going to have Tito's on your back bar because it's getting called all the time. And then you got to make a call when you do like another vodka. So I think we, you know, you've got your domestic Tito's and we we decided with Grey Goose because it's a nice, delicious, you know, uh, high-end premium vodka. Why Grey Goose over Kettle One? Why not? I don't know. Just had to make a I'm, choice. No, I mean, I'm curious. Um, Alphabetical like, order. I <laughs> I think it was just we had a conversation and somebody just said, let's get Grey Goose. I love it. And I went, yeah, all right, sure. Right. That, that was, was like literally how, how it went down. It, it, it's not secret, hate, uh, secret hatred of the finish. Uh, he's okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. I love the finish. Um, and I love the end, too. Um, but um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, like, you, you know, and, and we talked about uh, supporting local as well. You want to support local as much as you can, but then you also want to support local when local steps up and makes a dope ass product. So we all know that 
we have no issue with the aforementioned dist- uh, Durham Distillery. Uh, we sell the Conniption Gin at at Crafton because it's fucking great. And the Navy just, Strength, it, oh my god, yeah, is one of my the favorites. One primarily, we have, and it's not like good for North Carolina. It's, it's good for gin. It's it's one of the best gins that I've ever had. Uh, but then you know, then you got to round out your whole product. We've got like a Hendrix in there, and you know, you, you've got to you've got to have the the well vodkas and the well gins and the well tequilas because you have to make margin on your cocktails. But if you do it properly and you have a decent, inexpensive well liquor, and you do fresh lime juice and you do fresh juices and perhaps put some bitters in there to pop the flavors, then the end result is a high quality beverage that we as bartenders and bar owners can make a profit off of so that we can be in business, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the whole point, you know, but like what what most people need to understand is like you're paying for the the craft. You're you're paying for like specifically what Ariana is doing right now. Like she's she's hustling, she's making drinks, she's doing all this, she's putting it all together. That's what the cost is, you know. And in the end, everything else is just the raw material, you know, that you need to put together. Oh, 100%. I, you know, there's um, you know a lot of the cocktails that you'll see us make on um, you know our social media and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll feature certain bottles, um, not because of endorsement or any kind of thing like that. Like, we'll feature stuff that we enjoy, um, but I will guarantee you that every cocktail we make on there has also been made with, you know, whatever the typical well version of that spirit is, you know. Um, but, it, but that really gets to be the thing of it's about the craft of making it. So, whoa, well, okay. I. I'm, I'm handing this over to Elizabeth. She's not going to drink it. Drink this thing. All right, she is it trying happened. this one. That was delicious. Rimmed with a little tahini, as we mentioned. Garnished with a thin sliver of jalapeno. What are we drinking? So this is a, a drink that we actually... So another thing we do is signature cocktails. A friend of ours was going to a friend of theirs' birthday. Her name's Angel. And... Uh, South American descent, loves tequila, and uh, she said, you know, she's kind of (laughs) spicy. Make me a cocktail. I said, all right. And so I went through and started building basically a fruity margarita with some spice to it. So this is mango. This is pine. uh, Sorry, let me think. Pineapple, mango. We've got um, our hatch green chili bitters in here, the down the hatch. So that adds the heat. Sometimes we'll even shake it with a little jalapeno. I skipped that today just to avoid all the seeds and everything. You want to double strain that generally. Um, but you also, all the heat you're getting right now is off the down the hatch bitters, not from the jalapeno. And what's nice also is jalapeno. These I actually noticed are very vegetal. They don't have a lot of heat depending on the day you go to the grocery store, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, no, that's um, just the fruit. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't have a lot of heat, so the hatch green chili bitters are going to make sure that you actually get the same amount of heat every time. So for consistency's sake in a bar, it, it can really get you a consistent cocktail, avoid you with the, oh, hey, these you know, were super hot, and so we overdid it, and now everybody wants their money back. <laughs> it's all <laughs> Things like tasting that. a spice. Yeah. Exactly. I can't taste anything else, and I can't taste my food. Um, so this is a tequila-based cocktail. We use a Blanco tequila in this. We've used Sieta Leguas before. We're using the Mi Campo, which is our well Blanco, which is really pretty decent for, a, what is it, a $25 bottle, I think. Yeah, like that. So it's, it's uh, you know, lower on the um, realm of cost. And no offense, but twenty five dollars yeah. is not a well cost for uh, tequila for in my world. No, for us, for home, for home, for, for home cocktail. Yeah, yeah, for home cocktail. That's premium up in these parts. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, no. trust me, if we were if we were doing what you do, it, it, yes, it would be a, a much more yeah. Yeah. affordable I'm not, I'm not economic bottle. I'm not throwing Fortaleza in here, or you know, some tequila ocho, or yeah, anything crazy. By no, the way, no tears. I don't know if anybody, uh, you guys probably know this, but something that I heard and I think is kind of cool, uh, Siete Leguas is apparently the original Patron, that that's where they actually had the horse grinding the agave plant by going around yeah, seven times. Yeah, and, actually pulling the tajon. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so a lot of people don't realize that in Mexico, the way it's done is there's noms, right? And so those distilleries will put out multiple brands. Right. So you can actually, one of our favorite things is tequilamatchmaker.com. Yeah. And so you can actually look up by nom. So you're like, I really enjoyed that, that What's tequila. What's nom? By, you mean by number. name? Oh, no, name. Number. Oh, yes, number. So they all, they're all assigned yeah. a number. And so on the bottle, you'll actually see, oh, what's this yeah. one? 
one. It's kind of like uh, nom. like bourbon. Also, it's like has has yeah. a distilled spirit number. Exactly. Yeah. So this nom is eleven thirty seven. So yeah. you can look up on Tequila Matchmaker eleven thirty seven and say, hey, I really enjoyed that tequila. What else are they making? Yeah. And that'll give you an idea of what else you might enjoy on the shelf. And so it's called nom.com? No, 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 it's Tequila Matchmaker. Tequila Matchmaker. Yeah. And, and one of the there other things, if, if, if folks listening are, are big tequila fans, I would highly encourage you to go check out their list of um, additive free tequilas. They're, main t- they're doing the legwork and hmm. actually creating this list of additive free noms and brands. Um, and, you know, you may not care, that's fine. But. You know, these are brands that aren't adding any colorings. They're not adding any flavorings. You're getting just pure agave spirit. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, it runs a spectrum as far as additives go. You could be additive free. You could be adding a little bit of color just for consistency on the shelf, right? If you have a clear bottle, you don't want one looking a little more brown than the other because people start to question, you know, quality. Um, so <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> just to, for consistency sake, they'll add some coloring. And then you have other people that will go and Wait, add if vanilla we're talking politics, and so you're all saying kinds the of Mexican color. government isn't just completely earnest and honest about the things that they'd put into their liquor <laughs> and then bring into our country? Well, they're, al- they're they? allowed what? They're allowed to oh, add a certain on. amount by law. So, yeah. Um, um, but yeah. Okay, that's very cool. That's like Shots tip of the day. Fired. Tequila matchmaker. Um, I saw that you shook the cocktail, mm-hmm. and then you put in the bitters, and then you shook it again. Uh, it's just me almost forgetting to put the bitters in. I moved <laughs> okay. them. They were next that's to all the ingredients. You you I'm, try- I'm trying to listen yeah. and do this at the same time, so my brain, like, it, we had moved it over here because we had already talked about it, and it wasn't Matt also said to the mailman earlier, I noticed that you didn't zip your zipper, and he's like, uh, oh, that's just my zipper's down. Yeah. <laughs> Matt likes pointing out flaws. I thought that was a cool um, technical mix. And no, were I mean, be, You could have faked it and be like, actually, when you reshake the bitter, it distributes the cocktail but no, much better. But no, see, that's the thing. You're always going to get, you know, a straight, uh, a straight answer out of her. She, yeah, she's. <laughs> yeah. So, so when when we tell you, like, you know, this is something that you know she's, she's passionate about. I'm passionate about. You're going to, you know, the product that we're bringing you is something that we consumed before anybody else because yeah. we had a passion for cocktails, and to the point of like we don't do things that other like national manufacturers do to like dilute for qu- quantity and things like that. It's because. We're not going to give you something that we're not going to take, and we're going to give you a straight answer. You know, when you say, "Hey, what about X, Y, or Z?" You know, yeah. and that's important to us. That's awesome. I appreciate that. So, yeah. So, uh, what is what's next? What's your what's your goal for 2023? Are you expanding business production? Are you looking to distribute in new areas? What's going on? So we are always looking to bring on new business customers. We're um, really limited just down to how many people we can talk to um, Mm -hmm. because we are all about building that relationship. So we're already in 25 locations between Winston and Wilmington, which we launched uh, January 30th, 31st. Uh, So right at the end of January were our first deliveries with our first customers so we've been building, uh, you know, kind of a business basis. And then from there, um, farmer's markets, getting more in people's hands and kind of some customer education. Because as you can imagine, not everybody understands what a bitter is and how to use it. Um, they think they only go in Manhattans and old fashions. I think that the idea of using it more in the culinary world, too, really will help. Like you, talking to not just culinary, but baking student, baking people. Actually, like. uh, once a month, I do a baking and cooking with bitters class over at Fuquay Spice and Tea. Oh. Uh, our next one's on the 21st. Those tickets will probably be posted sometime this week. Yep. Okay. So that's going to be our summer program. Um, I change it up once a quarter as far as you get uh, something sweet, something savory, some kind of tea or coffee or both integrating mm. bitters and some of her ingredients in the shop and then you get to take home recipe cards for everything you tasted as well as a whole bottle of bitters and usually some other ingredient for making the cocktail so our spring program you got our toasted coconut bitters with a bag of demerara sugar and some spices to make like an all-spice syrup since mm. we can't get all-spice dram in the state um, <laughs> along with a whole bunch of other things and uh, and so you got the cocktail recipe on how to make an, a tropical old-fashioned and so it was you know an easy old-fashioned drink to make at home and all the you know ingredients that you need to do that other than the liquor right yeah. so you go buy the aged rum or the bourbon that you want to put in the cocktail and you could play with it and do a couple different ones if you wanted to and so yeah that's we're doing a lot of that too and i think as far as um, kind of expanding on on what 2023 brings uh we've got other products we want to bring to market besides bitters um you know we kind of want to have a, a, a full slate of cocktail provisions that we'd like to be able Ooh, to offer yeah. 
you know, everybody wants it. Mm, crap. That's and an almond, that's, almond, almond and we're sure. that's gonna, number one on and our gonna bring list, actually. It. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You are going to do an orgeat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That would be fantastic. That, for, most notably, like in Mai Tais and such. But Yeah. 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 So for, for everybody who's only ever read it, that's the orgiat you see on most yeah. tiki drinks. Orgiat. Uh, it's orgiat. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, and that's a complicated, semi-complicated thing to make. We yeah. would make that at Midtown Grill back in the day, and it would take us about a month. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nut milk and all this crap. It's oh, almonds, and don't get me started about almonds, but, you know. Please don't, don't, get our world. Start, don't get him started. Oh, yeah. Almonds. And yeah. one of the things we're planning on doing is um, kind of in line for the holiday season is being able to do um, spirit-based sampler boxes so you know a, a bourbon box a gin box a rum box of smaller bottles of our bitters uh, for gift giving yeah. opportunities things like that you know this is not completely non sequitur but in in fitting with what you were talking about with like these like little uh, cocktail um boxes or so i was talking to somebody who's in the craft beer market and we were talking about rtds right ready to drink cocktails that are in cans and they're very popular right now and he was telling me that one of his execs at these, this big craft beverage company was saying that the, the exec was saying the fault with uh, seltzers was that when the craft industry got into making seltzers, they proved that the flavoring and like the intention could be great, but that the seltzer or the, the liquor itself in the seltzer was the problem. The malt, if you will, is the thing that no one really wants to drink. And so, like, a truly in a White Claw is fine because it is what it is. Like, it's people like that low-level flavor. But when you try to elevate it to the next level, then all it does is tee you up for wanting an RTD. Like, you want vodka or whiskey to be the liquor inside that elevated cocktail. And he's like, if we would have just left... Uh, seltzers alone and just let people enjoy their bullshit seltzers then it wouldn't have taken away from like what people are drinking with craft co- or craft beers so the idea was that craft cocktails or RTDs are taking sales away from craft beer hmm. and it, it's leaving seltzers out on their own but it's like we gave them a little step up by trying to make seltzers high quality. Yeah, so we actually, I mean, it's interesting, like the whole topic of RTDs, you know, when we were looking at doing this, you know, we did a lot of market research and RTDs are poised to be the fastest growing segment of the spirit community. Yeah. Um, just because, it, you know, it's easy to get out. Yeah, it's a canned de- Moscow mule, yeah. canned margarita, Absolutely. canned whatever, old-fashioned, sure. And, and, the pro- and, and the one issue I have with, uh, with a lot of the RTDs or even the, like, bottled cocktail recipe kind of things, where, you know, the bo- old-fashioned bottle, you know, you just add your spirit, you're, you're kind of left with oftentimes an overly sweet cocktail, in my opinion, mm. and that is oftentimes just off-putting. My cousin uh, actually uses... Our noir bitters in his ready to drink old fashioned because it's too sweet. And hmm. Adding I would, that, <laughs> playing the devil's advocate in this whole situation, though, I get what you're saying, but having just being a, a person in this world that makes drinks for many people is people like sweet. Yeah, and the general populace loves sugary sweet stuff, and so like you'd like to think that people are like, no, I want something more sophisticated. In the end, no, they just want sugary sweet stuff. So that's why that that category is thriving right now. And for those that have a more esteemed palate, they're going to make their cocktail from scratch. But there's so many people that are like, can I just have that in a can and be on a boat and just crack it and drink it? It's like, yeah, cool, done and done. Simplicity, my friend. And so that's. That's the rub, and I think the general populace kind of enjoys sugary, sweet, simple drinks, and that's where we're at. The American populace. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how those take off yeah. internationally. I mean, they have yet to sell to Finland, but uh, <laughs> when they get there... You know I'm the sure finish. Be, yeah. Um, this is great, guys. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I'd like to... Like to um, well, have you guys made a presentation to a wholesaler or to a distributor to, to, for your product? Uh, we haven't yet. Okay. Um, I think it's one of those things where you know we're kind of still in this like bootstrapping, coming up to speed, figuring out where we want to go with this. We have some ideas that, um, depending on how things work out over the next you know eight months to a year, um, 
you know, may make sense to look at distil- uh, distribution. It may make sense to look at wholesalers. Um, currently, you know, we're still doing kind of the we're enjoying the face to face component of it. Bootstrap it. We yeah. want to we want healthy growth and we want to be able to scale and keep quality. So we don't want to go with a coat packer or anything like that. We still like right now I make every bottle yeah. that, that gets distributed, right? We don't have any other employees, it's just the two of us. So we want to make sure that we're growing in a fashion that allows us to continue to produce quality product. And that's really important to us. So Ooh, can I will you make for the bartenders for like the um the, the 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 wholesalers a like an Angostura a um a dropper bottle like that you can just shake oh yeah the as dash. opposed to like a sorry like people don't know what I'm talking about but like all of yours are packaged with an eye droplet so you have to unscrew it you have to pinch it and suck up the air and then dump it into your drink but like an angostura just has a quick eye droplet that mm-hmm. you just shake and it yeah shakes the, the dasher it. bottles they're a little more inconsistent but I, I know for speed purposes yeah they're great um that's something we have considered when we go to larger uh, you know when speed becomes a, a big issue for a lot of the bars right now we're in a lot of the craft cocktail bars that already are using bittermans and people like that they yeah. use um an eye dropper so it's not a huge issue for them but i think as we grow having even if it's just a secondary cap that you can put on there slap it on that, yeah. slap on on having that well, um yeah that's good i mean max just gave you yeah. a nugget there so yeah. uh yeah um this is great and uh well speaking of one place you should definitely be in is our friends at triangle wine company and uh triangle wine company helps us as max likes to say keep the lights on in the studio mm-hmm. um although they're not doing such a good job with the air conditioning today but uh the triangle wine company is a great place for applications like uh your bitters or your vermouths or any cocktail mixers but also of course great wine great beer that they have they have tap rooms in all their locations which are in which are four one in southern pines one in holly springs hey yeah, they're, they're gonna bring them on we're gonna tell them and they're gonna bring <laughs> they're it gonna on. Do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is an one yeah, in yeah. carry and then uh of course they have it in the north raleigh area you can go to trianglewineco.com uh for curbside pickup delivery and uh don't forget to use the ncfb promo code for a nice little discount i was gonna say speaking of ncfb promo codes whenever this airs if folks want to order from remedycocktailcompany.com uh, use NCFB there, and we'll get you 15% off your order uh, for 30 days after whenever this airs. Well, boom. That there sounds great. So basically uh, for the middle of the summer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go get your so tiki check that out. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you for doing that for our, our, our guests, our listeners. So you heard it there. Get 15% off when you go to RemedyCocktailCompany.com. So go to RemedyCocktail.com or go to find your Remedy Cocktail Company bitters, and you will drink Extremely American. Thanks for listening to the NCFB Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.